The Exchange Server Connector enables you to manage devices that use the Exchange ActiveSync protocol. And in this demonstration, we're going to have a look at how we can create one of these Exchange Connectors. So what we've done is we've come into our administration workspace, we've come to Hierarchy Configuration, and we've come to the Exchange Connectors. So we'll right click this point here and we'll add an Exchange Server Connector. That'll then bring us into a wizard. So the first thing we need to do here is we just need to specify for our on-premise Exchange Server the URL. I'm going to specify that as http colon forward slash forward slash mail.adatum.com. We're not going to specify an Exchange Client Access Server and we're not using a hosted environment, so we'll select next. On the account page, all we're going to do here is just for the Exchange Server Connector account, I'm going to use the computer account of the site server and select next. Then on the discovery page here, what we're going to do is for the delta synchronization interval, what we're going to do here is we're just going to specify at this point 120 minutes. And as it mentions here, it just identifies new mobile devices and limited changes to known mobile devices. We could also specify our schedule as well. Currently occurs every day. Down at the bottom here, we've got ignore mobile devices that are inactive for more than however many days. So let's make this a year. 365 days we will find all mobile devices in the exchange organization and select next that brings us to our settings page so on our sentence page we'll just go to general to start with and we'll select edit and just on the general page here what we can see is we can configure the mobile device general settings so we've got internet sharing from the mobile devices is allowed we've got computer synchronization is allowed and we've got allow mobile devices that cannot be provisioned also allowed as well so what we're going to do here is for mobile devices that cannot be provisioned we're going to set this to prohibited then we'll select ok that brings us to our password settings so we'll select edit and just on the um the configure the mobile device setting passwords here so what we have is we've got the ability to require password settings on mobile devices so what we'll do here is we'll set this to required then we can specify our minimum password, length in characters, so we'll leave that as four, password expiration in days, what we'll do is we'll set this to be 30 days. Then we've got the number of passwords remembered, let's set that 24. In the case of number of failed logon attempts, let's drop that down to five. Idle time in minutes before the mobile device is locked, we'll set that to, let's set that to 30. Password complexity, we're happy with the pin. Allow simple password, happy with allowed, and allow password recovery. We'll set that to allowed as well and select OK. We then go to email management. So within email management, we'll select edit. So pop an IMAP mail. What we'll do here is we'll say that's prohibited. Maximum time to keep email, we'll keep everything. Keep everything for calendar. Direct push when roaming. We'll leave that as prohibited. We don't want to incur massive data charges. Allow message formats, we're happy with HTML and plain text. We're not going to bother specifying any size limits and email attachments here, we'll allow them. And again, we won't specify any limits. Then we'll come to security and just select edit. So remote desktop is allowed, removable storage, also allowed as well. Camera, we'll prohibit the camera. Bluetooth, we'll allow Bluetooth, we'll allow wireless connections. We'll prohibit intranet, sorry, infrared. We'll also prohibit the browser. Storage card encryption is required. File encryption is required. And SMS and MS, MMS messaging, we'll say prohibited. We're using email. We'll select OK. Finally, we'll come to applications and select edit. And what we'll do here, unsigned file installation is prohibited. Unsigned applications as well, prohibited. Select our OK button and now rather than manage everything through the Exchange Server organization, we're now managing everything through Config Manager. Then we'll select our Next button. Just on the summary page, we'll select Next. We don't actually have an Exchange Server in our organization, but we'll select Next anyway. And as you can see, everything is correct. And we'll select Close. And that's the end of this demonstration of creating an exchange server connector. Thank you.